Welcome to the kill test. You ready? Yes, sir. It'll kill. Genghis Khan's sword. Sweet. One of the most notorious rulers in history, Genghis Khan and his Mongolian army conquered the Asian continent through terrifying land seizures throughout the 13th century. Khan and his troops used the slightly curved sword to inflict deep and lethal attacks during horse raids, killing tens of millions of people in their path. This brutal single-edged blade was lightweight for sustained mounted combat, while the razor-sharp edge easily decapitated prisoners, which was often the tactic used when seizing new territory. Having established the Mongol Empire, one of the largest land empires to date, Genghis Khan remains one of the most prolific rulers in history. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your sword and deliver some killing blows to this ballistic dummy. Peter, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Peter, first up, your edge is sharp. The balance feels good, but it did take quite a pronounced bend. But the more important thing is, it'll kill. <laughs> I, I timed that perfectly. <laughs> All right, Doc Everett, are you ready, sir? Let's do some surgery. All right, Everett, your edge is very sharp. It slashes nicely. Your tip punctures easily, cuts on the way out. With all these cuts, it will kill. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now, to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I'll be attacking our armored targets over here. Peter, you're up first. You ready? Let her rip, Peter Chip. All right, Peter. Um, I'm going to start with your handle. I find it really comfortable, uh, the way it flares towards the tip. Works pretty good for my hand. And I love what you did with this kind of low layer count Damascus. It's very dramatic. But we've got some very deep rolls on this edge. Yeah, there you go. Hear it. Those chips, that's an issue. But all in all, you did a good job. All right, Everett, you ready? I am. OK. Piece of armor. Nice. All right, Everett, your blade still spot on. What I really like is the fact that that, that blade is at its widest point, maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch. You don't need weight and mass for strength in a properly tempered blade. That's really good. You've got a section of blade here that's not quite as sharp as it was right there. All in all, uh, I think you did a great job. Awesome. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the War Batter Slice. To test the sharpness of your blade, I will take your weapon and slash across these war banners. Peter, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this.
So where your edge has a chip, you can see it catches and rips through the banner. Where it's not, it cuts nicely. Overall, sir, it will cut. All right, Everett, it's your turn. You ready, sir? I think this beats the hell out of peer review. All right, let's find <laughs> out. <laughs> Okay, Everett, your edge here does cut. It's sharp, it cuts in some of the areas. On some parts of it, it ripped, but overall, sir, it'll cut. Awesome. All right, gentlemen, based on what we've seen in the weapons test, the judges have made their final decision about which of you is our next forest and fire champion. Peter. Your sword took the most damage in our strength test. You had a rolled edge and your blade bent for that reason. I have to dismiss you from the forge. I may not be the forge and fire champion, but I still think I'm a badass smith. Well, Everett, your blade is comfortable, well-balanced, strong, and deadly, and that makes you the forge and fire champion. And that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job. Come on forward and shake our hands, man. <laughs> This experience was really fun. It was really tough in a lot of places, and uh, it's been a hell of a ride. General Patton Sabre. Renowned for his expertise in tank warfare during World War I and II, General George S. Patton of the U.S. Army was also an exceptional swordsman and Olympic fencer. His signature sword of his own design, the M1913 Sabre, was built based on his sabre training in France. The lethal blade was known for being a vicious thruster, both on horseback, where the speed of the horse and the precision strike of the point inflicted maximum bodily destruction, and on foot, where a soldier could use lunges and parries to attack their enemies. Although General Patton perished in Germany shortly after the Second World War, his legacy lives on through his sword's design, which is now revered as a prized artifact among collectors. Welcome to the kill test. Your sabers look deadly. To find it out, I will take your weapon, deliver some slashes and thrusts on this ballistic stump. John, you're up first. You ready for this? Yeah. Cut its heart out. <laughs> it's just not right. All right, John, first up, let's talk about the handle construction. It's a little bit on the big side, but I'm able to hold on to it. Now, your edge, it's very sharp. And it is a pleasure to wield because aside from looking beautiful, it'll kill. Thank you very much. All right, Chris, your turn. Are you ready, sir? <laughs> yes, sir, I sure am. All right, Chris, let's talk about your saber here. First up, what I love about it, it's got a sharp edge. Every swing I do cuts. The one thing here is that you did pick up a little bit of a bend right here at this junction. It's warped a little bit, but it pierces and cuts, and most importantly, it will kill. Thank you, sir. Bladesmiths, your General Patton saber will kill. For that, you deserve a General Pat on the back. Next up is the strength test. 
Jay? All right, Bladesmiths, for a strength test, I'm gonna take your sabers, and I'm going to beat them and stab them into these field obstacles. Now, I'm not really concerned about what your swords do to our obstacles. I want to see the opposite, what they do to your swords. John, you're up first. You ready to go? Ready to go. All right, let's do it. Nice job, John. I like the blade. The sword itself overall is on the heavy side. The handle is a lot there, a lot of extra weight. It does help counterbalance quite a bit, though. Still got a good edge on it. There's some pretty heavy strikes on there. And the blade bent, but came back to true. It's all right, tight, and straight. Good job. Thank you. How you feeling, Chris? Good as I can be, sir. All right. That right here. Yeah. Oh. No cuts, no blood. Lucky day. Chris, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure in our strength test, and unfortunately, you cannot continue with testing, which means you cannot be the Forge Fire Champion. Please exit the forge. Well, John, General Patton was known for being a tough guy, and you made a tough and sharp sword that really honors his name. Congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. How do you feel right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, man, come on over <laughs> and shake our hands. Good job, brother. It's a beautiful sword. Yeah. I'm the new Forged and Fire champion. You did a phenomenal job on that hay tree. Thank you, sir. I'm proud of what I did, and it's been a fun deal. Hey, can I get a Forge and Fire bow buckle now? No bow buckle. Come on. Napoleon's saber. One of history's most ingenious military minds, Napoleon Bonaparte was France's emperor beginning in the early 1800s. Napoleon revolutionized battlefield tactics with the brilliant use of cannonade in close coordination with cavalry. His lightning-fast horsemen carried pistols and curved sabers, which delivered deadly thrusts and crippling slashes in close combat. In the pivotal Battle of Marengo, a victory that assured his political ascendance in France, Napoleon carried this gold-adorned saber. All right, Blazemits, to find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I'm going to deliver slashes and thrusts on this pig carcass. Seth, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, Seth. From the snotter to the trotter, every cut with this, as you can see, offers a very deep, lacerating cut. The only issue is that your blade did pick up a little bit of a bend. But overall, sir, with the way this weapon moves and feels, it will kill. Thank you very much. Good job. <laughs> All right, Stephen, your turn. You ready, sir? Yes, sir. Let's do this. I'm hoping that it will kill. Do it. 
Oh, I see. Let's talk about your saber here. It's a heavy, unbalanced sword. The minute you pick up, it wants to pull straight down. It's hard to wield. But the weight of your sword here will definitely bash in and cut. So it will kill. Thank you. Up next is the strength test, and we have the Jaminator. Jay. Oh, bladesmiths, a saber is supposed to be a sturdy weapon. So let's see how yours hold up on our strength test. The ram skull chop. Now I'm going to take each of your sabers and with no mercy at all, bash them into this ram skull. It's not only going to test the overall strength of your knife, but the heat treat on your edge. Now, I don't really care what your swords do to the skulls. I want to see what the skulls do to your swords. Now, Seth, you're up first. You ready to go? Swing it good. All right, Seth, your edge held up, but we do have a bigger bend in the blade than we had before. Your guard is now mobile, and both of your bolsters came off as well. So this mechanical connection right in here failed, but the connection between your blade and your handle is still sturdy. You took some damage, but you survived. Good job. Thank you, sir. Steve, after seeing that, how you feel? I don't know. Let's see. Well, Steve, we obviously have a problem here. You got a very coarse grain structure in here, so I don't know if there was enough tempering done on this 5160 blade. I mean, one strike is all it took and snapped it right in half, so that's obviously a problem. Well, Steve, there's nothing left to test. Your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure and can no longer continue in this competition, and for that reason, I have to ask you to please exit the forge. I'm upset. I'm very disappointed that the blade broke like that. I'm not coming home as a champion, but I'm coming home a whole lot smarter. I've made some friends that I'll have forever. I would do this again, no questions asked. Well, Seth, this is a competition where the best blade wins. Your blade survived this strength test. You are the Forest and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. How do you feel? Surreal right now. Well, good job, brother. You're a champion. I could not be more excited about this experience. This competition has been some of the most fun of my life. The money's going to do some things for the shop, and my wife and my daughter are going to go on a real nice trip. Good job, Seth. My name is Seth Boris, and I'm the Forge and Fire champion. George Washington's Kalishmar. I've never even heard of this thing, never seen it, nothing. Right now, my heart is just racing because I'm freaking out. The Kalishmar was a unique dueling sword that became popular during the late 17th century and was a favorite blade style of George Washington. The weapon had an extremely broad forte, which gave the blade ample parrying strength. However, the sword rapidly tapered to a thin point, allowing for precise thrusting and stabbing attacks. An avid sword collector, George Washington even had a Kalish Mard bladed small sword at his side while swearing in as America's first president. The weapon was such an iconic part of Washington's persona, one can even be spotted alongside the first president in this iconic 1824 John Trumbull painting. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your Kalish Mard and deliver harassing cuts and thrusts to this big carcass. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Not really, but go ahead. All right, Josh, first up, it's got nice weight to it. Now, your handle construction. It is small enough to where I can get my hand around it, but it doesn't roll. Your edge, as you can see, is sharp. It will kill. Thanks, sir. All right, Dan, it's your turn. You ready for this? Let's do it.
right, Dan. You have a very aggressive tip. The thrusting worked very well, but your edges right here are not sharp. I mean, I can even move it around with my glove. It's not cutting it. You can see that your blade took a bend. But overall, because you're able to thrust, this blade, sir, will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, our cherry wood chop. In honor of George Washington, the Kolschmar was known as a fast, light, flexible weapon. It was designed for the duel. So to test the strength of your blade, I'll be doing several tip cuts against that wood and then thrusting into it, flexing your blade in both directions. Make sure that temper's right and that that blade doesn't pick up a set. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Go for it. All right, Josh, there are a lot of pointy bits on this guard that don't need to be there. That really digs right into your hand. Other than that, it did well. It flexed very nicely and came back to true. So good job. Thank you. All right, Dan, are you ready to go? Sure, let's go. I commend your, your effort in making a blade that's that's very nicely uh, done, but the heat treat on this blade uh, has just failed. Um, I mean, I, I no longer know where the tip is, which is disappointing because I think you did a beautiful job constructing this weapon. All right, bladesmiths, to find out how sharp your weapons are, I will take a Kalish bar and deliver harassing slashes and thrusts on these sandbags. Josh, you're up first. You ready for this? Sure. All right, Josh, once again, very sharp edge on your blade right here. Easily cuts through these sandbags. It stayed true, easy to align and see my target and cut it, and it will cut. Thank you. Dan, you ready? Yep. Let's do this. Dan, when I look at the bend on this Kalishmar, I won't be able to stab straight and true. So I won't really know where the tip is. And for me, that's a real problem. I don't feel like I can test this blade in the same way I can test the blade before it. Because if I have to do any kind of corrections, that's not a fair test. Unfortunately, Dan, your blade did not make the cut. And for that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. As, you know, like a period piece, as a wall hanger, my blade was spot on. But as a sword, just didn't make the cut. Josh, you are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. This is, hands down, one of the best moments of my life. Good job. Thank you. To, like, my wife and my kids, this just proves that you can do anything. It's just a matter of putting your mind to it and putting your heart in it. Blackbeard's infamous cutlass. A 
Among the most notorious pirates of the 18th century, Blackbeard terrorized Caribbean and Atlantic merchant shipping with his trademark cutlass in hand. Its short but thick curved blade featured a razor sharp edge that was ideal for hacking and slashing during close quarters combat while seizing small vessels. In his legendary battle with Captain Robert Maynard in 1718, Blackbeard's cutlass broke Maynard's sword in half with a single blow. Today, Blackbeard's menacing presence and expert swordsmanship can still be seen in the video game Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag. Bladesmiths, to test the lethality of your cutlass, I'm going to inflict lethal wounds on these ballistic dummies. Jason, you're up first. You ready? I sure hope so, Doug. Let's do this. All right, Jason, you got a very big handle here. But at least it's got the swells, it's got an indexing to where I hold on to it, I can tell where the edge is. The weight that you have in this weapon is so light and sense that I can wield it even around here. You've got the clavicle into the ribs, all the way through the lungs, and definitely it will kill. All I ever wanted to hear, you made my day. Seth, you're up next, you ready? Get some. Right, Seth, your sword is forward heavy without a balance coming back. I don't know whose shoulder's gonna hurt more. The dummies are mine, but your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. Test the strength and durability of your swords. I'll be chopping through these bones and then attacking that peg leg. Now remember, this test is not about what your blades do to these targets. It's about what these targets do to your blades. Jason, you're up. Are you ready? The balance of your weapon is really nice, which is surprising because you've made a two-handed cutlass. Your blade held up very well, except for the one little chip. And it's not even a chip, it's a roll. So it didn't blow out. It's a good job. Thank you, Dave. All right, Seth, are you ready? Yes, sir. Seth, first up, this thing's a beast. It is probably a pound heavier than your competitor's sword. Your blade, I mean, I can run my finger nail down this. I can see a couple of glinting spots, but it really didn't take any damage. All right, bladesmiths, let's find out if there's any edge left. This is the rope cut and pirate sail slash. To test the edge of your cutlass, I will cut this rope, which will raise the sail, and then I will slash the sail. This is all about what your sword will do to the sail and rope. Jason, you up first. Ready? Yes, sir. Jason, your edge cut through the rope easily and cuts with every part that the edge met on this pirate sail. Overall, sir, 
your sword will cut. Awesome. Seth, how you feeling? Feeling good, let's go. Let's do this. All right, Seth, what are the chances you find a very dull spot on the first cut on the rope? But on the second cut, he had found another spot that was sharp. But on the sail, working a heavy sword like this affects my cuts. Jason, Seth, the judges have tested your weapons and they've made a final decision. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Jason. Congratulations, you're the new Forge and Fire champion. Seth, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Please surrender your blade. Jason, congratulations, you are our new Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a bundle of bullion that's worth 10 grand. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> Come on, that's incredible. Forge and Fire champion, 